G'day guys, welcome back to the channel. Now the question has been asked, is it worth spending a lot of money on an espresso machine? We have three very different machines here at three very different price points. We're gonna put them to the test and see how they perform against each other so you can make up your own mind as to what you should be spending. So first off the ranks, of course, is the San Remo Cube, which I've modified mostly just for looks. Um, bottomless Passato portafilter because it looks cool and great little learning tool for tamping. But other than that, it's pretty standard. Um, I have adjusted the extraction pressure down to seven bar. We're gonna leave that there because you can do that on this machine if you don't enjoy warranty. So first up, San Remo Cube retails for $4,600 here in Australia. Next up is the La Pavoni Euro Piccola which we have just fully refurbished. There's still a couple of things I need to do, but other than, again, bottomless portafilter, it's pretty well a standard machine. Um, I have put a single tip on the steam wand, um, but other than that, it's just a normal machine. There's no internal upgrades, um, just new seals and stuff, because if you've watched the videos, this thing was not working. And this guy retails for about 1,350 in Australia. Um, great little machine for the money. I will say that there is nothing better for that price. And last but probably least, we have the Lama Zocco, I mean the Kmart Anko machine here, um, which is actually a pretty impressive machine. If you've seen my video review on this, I'm pretty impressed with it. Now, to make things fair, I've drilled a hole in the bottom of the portafilter to make it bottomless. I literally just put a hole saw through that, um, as you can see. That's what used to be there. I cut it out because they're rubbish. So, fair competition, bottomless portafilter. Um, now, yes, it doesn't match the brew bar because we've covered it in stickers and this guy's worth a whopping $120. Now, the reason I don't care how it looks is because this machine's going to be given away shortly. Stay tuned for that. Anyway, we're gonna put these three machines to the test. First up, espresso test. San Remo Cube, we are dosing it 22 grams in because it's the perfect spot for the taste that I prefer. So we've got 43 grams out in 27.3 seconds. Pretty well bang on with the recipe. Let's stir, taste, and then I'll tell you some results. Okay, I'll do the same stir for each of the coffees just to remove another variable. Yes, stirring is very important. Don't just swirl unless you have a groove. If you know, you know. Cheers. Beautiful, well-rounded, very smooth. I drank that about half an hour ago, exactly the same. In case you're wondering what we're drinking, it is the Quattro Coffees Fourth Farm House Blend. Got a couple of different names now at the cafe, and that's fine, we all know what it means. Um, but I drink this every day. This is what we serve in the cafe as well. It's perfect. Let's move on to the La Pavoni. All right, guys, now I've removed the little drip tray there just so I can get it a little bit lower so that you can see what's going on right there. Just a little bit nicer. 20 grams, because that's the basket we're running. Thanks to the legends at Casa Espresso once again. All right, so 20 grams in, we are aiming for about 40 grams out, which we probably won't get because it's a lap of only. I really need to get used to that going the wrong way. A little bit of a pre-infusion. Let's go. So I'm aiming for a nice long extraction. Uh, I found with this coffee, it's really happy on the La Pavoni. So we definitely didn't get the yield we were after, 
but that still looks like a very good coffee. I'll show you guys in a moment. Okay, for the La Pavoni Espresso. It looks pretty good. It did go below yield, but that should mean it's closer to like a ristretto. So it should be fairly sweet, and that's typically what I aim for. Up dose and lower the yield. Nice and sweet. Great. Definitely a good coffee. Not as balanced as the cube. That that it's just not going to produce the same coffee. It just can't. It doesn't have the power behind it. But a good, good espresso. Not bad at all. Um, I am not the greatest barista when it comes to, well, any coffee, but especially with a lever machine. There's still a few things I want to learn and practice, and I just want to mess around with these things and see what I can get out of it. But that's a good coffee, not quite as good as the cube, which is fair because it's nowhere near the price. Let's move on to the La Anko and see what we can come up with. So we have got 18 grams of espresso ground, quite a bit coarser than the other machines because it just doesn't quite have the power, even though it claims to have a 15 bar pump. It doesn't really count for much. Now, I've moved everything down here so you can actually see what I'm doing. It's really hard to do this without a dosing ring. Might have a chat to Venturi and see if that's something they can do. Okay, let's see if we can make a coffee. So a shaking machine makes this very difficult because, well, it just wants to move. Okay, so we've ended up with 32 and a bit grams out um, in kind of the right amount of time. So that's not too bad. Again, we've gone a little bit below the yield, but let's give it a taste and see how we go. All right, time to test the La Anko. Actually sounds kind of cool. Um, definitely not as much crema, but let's go. That's good. That is, that is actually a good coffee. And like I did in the review slash something video I did with that machine, I was, I've been very impressed with it. So keeping in mind, we're using a very expensive coffee grinder. The grinder is worth a whole lot more than that machine. It's actually worth more than the La Pavoni as well. So don't think you can just buy one of these, chuck around coffee in, because it's not going to make good coffee. It just won't. But that's good. It's definitely higher in acidity, um, but not necessarily in a bad way. So good job. That was the first coffee I've pulled with a bottomless, um, and it really showed me the quality of the extraction on this thing. That's one of the reasons I wanted to do this, is to see what it's doing. Also, it helps me get cups and scales and stuff underneath. I'm gonna show you something. So sit tight. This might surprise you if you know about espresso. So this is my knock box after making three coffees. I think it's pretty obvious which coffee is which. Obviously that's a 58 mil, so that's from the San Remo. That's from the La Pavoni. That's from the La Anko. It's not bad by any means. Um, you can see that the, it's not super consistent. The color of it's pretty nasty. That's the La Pavoni. Let's break it open so we can see. Super Consistent, of course, perfectly consistent. See if we can break this. You can see by the color, it's just 
even though we dosed really high and pulled out very minimal coffee, it's over extracted, um, hence the acidity. But all things aside, let's really break this down and see how all three of these machines compare to each other. So let's be honest, the results aren't actually that surprising. I've made coffee on all three of these machines. They're all in the brew bar for a reason. Now the cube that has made over a thousand coffees, um, the app has a shot counter and I've checked it, it's over a thousand cups. And it will continue to do that forever. I'll service it, I'll look after it. It'll continue to make incredible espresso. The La Pavoni, well, it's a La Pavoni. There is not a lot of room for error. You need to get it right to get a good espresso out of it. So it is very rewarding making coffee on a La Pavoni or any lever machine. It feels amazing. If you've ever used one and you've extracted a nice shot, you understand what I'm saying. It is amazing. It's like driving an old manual stick shift Ferrari. You feel everything. It's, a, it's amazing. It's beautiful. And as long as you look after it like the previous owner didn't, it will make coffee forever. There is no secret about that. These machines are amazing. It will outlast everything on this bench and even, the, even that. It, it just will. It's amazing because it's so simple. Replace seals. There's no electronics other than a couple of sensors and stuff, but it makes amazing coffee and will continue to do so forever. Now, the absolute shocker on the bench is the La Anco. It's now called the La Anco because it deserves more than being called a Kmart Anco. That thing is a beast. Does it make amazing espresso? No, but it's $120. It can't make amazing espresso, but it makes a good coffee for the price. You can buy 33 of those or one of those. Now, will it do that forever? No, not a chance. I'll be surprised if that thing lasts beyond the warranty period, making actual coffee. If you do the math, this has made about three coffees a day, give or take. Let's say two to three coffees a day for 12 months. If I did that with this machine, it's, it's not going to last. It will die. There's too much plastic. There's just not enough quality in it, but it doesn't matter. Just go and buy another one. But the key factor is, does it make the coffee as well? No. It just can't. So you can make a good coffee with each of these machines. This will do it forever, but it takes a lot more effort. This will do it for a very long time with very minimal effort. This will make a good coffee for a short period of time for a very low price. So that really comes down to what you would prefer to do. If you want something that's beautiful and Instagram friendly, both of these machines are amazing. If you don't have a lot of bench space, both of these machines are amazing. So there's a lot of variables here and there's not necessarily an answer for what is the best machine to buy. I love all three of these machines, even though this one's going to be given away shortly. Details below, go and check out Patreon. So I need you to tell me which machine do you think is best out of these three because they're all good in their own way. Cheap, makes good coffee. Reasonable price, makes incredible coffee if you can put in the effort and the knowledge. Makes amazing coffee every time as long as you don't get it completely wrong. What's it worth to you guys? Let me know in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Like I said, make sure you check out Patreon because we're giving this away shortly. I'm going to miss it. That's weird. I never thought I would say that. It's a horrible machine, but it's amazing. I don't, I don't know how that works. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Have yourselves a great day and happy brewing. <laughs>